This video is powered by the pros at Pascal Air Plumbing and Electric. Arkansas owned, Arkansas operated. GoPascal.com. Eric, just just for general overall thoughts, you you were sitting right in front of us, and you were acting like you were you know coaching a regular season game or something. I thought. Uh, no, I I, I was. Uh, first of all, the crowd was awesome. I mean, it was uh, closer to six thousand than than fifty five hundred. So the the turnout on a weather's not great. We're you know we're still a long way from playing a game. So I thought the crowd was was awesome. I think the guys felt that even pregame. But um, a lot of things that we need to clean up. We need to get better. Uh, but all things that that we think are teachable. Uh, we you know the shooting is obviously. Um, we're going to be able to stretch the defense out a little bit more than maybe we have in the past. So uh, really pleased with our shooting. Um, pretty pleased with how the flow of the offense is. It's uh, you know we're running an offense that we ran for about ten games two years ago. Um, that that's kind of what Milwaukee ran uh, two years ago. Um, and it requires a lot of thinking and a lot of reading, and, and um, you know, pretty happy with with how far advanced the guys are with that. And we obviously we got to get a lot, lot better, um, and and you know, some guys are further advanced on knowing this than than others, but that'll that'll hopefully come over time. We know Khalif Battle was on on crutches. Can you tell us what's going on with him? Yeah, he practiced today. Um, he, I walked over, got in the gym, and and uh, he said his foot was really sore, and uh, they took him for preliminary look at over at the football facility. Um, at, at at that point, nothing that, you know, there was no determination that there was anything, um, no break or anything. But I, I know that they're going to look at it again tomorrow, um, you know, with some different X-rays or whatever. So. Um, you know, as of now, no update, no nothing other than the fact that, uh, you know, he felt uncomfortable, um, not in the same spot as where, where he had a break earlier. Um, same foot, but not, you know, not really related as of now. But, but what, we did have more than one doctor look at him um, over at football, and then we had a couple more doctors in our locker room. So right now, nothing unless uh, – you know, whatever test they run, you know, something comes up. Yeah, Eric, just wanted your thoughts on L tonight, 16 points, 8 of 10 shooting, 6 assists, 1 turnover. Seems like sitting right behind you, it looks like you've got a good bit of trust built up in him already. Yeah, I thought L was phenomenal. Um, shot selection, you mentioned, Scotty, I think you said he was 8 of 10. And and one of his shots was uh, – it was addressed right away. It was his first shot of the game, a pull-up three that uh, he's not going to take again um, to start a game. Uh, other than that, you know, you take that shot away and he goes eight of nine, and that's, it's, that's really hard to do. Um, but I think that, that some of the shooting is really going to open up dribble drive angles for guys like L and, and, uh, and Devo. I think that um, – you know the threat of perimeter shooting. Even even our bigs. I mean, Kai made a three, and and Bay, uh, maybe his foot was on the line or whatever. But but you know Davenport and, and Joseph. You know we have some guys that can, that can make shots. And Devo's really really been shooting the ball from three at a high clip in practice. Like, and we've been working every day. I mean we end every practice with ten minute shooting, uh, nothing but three balls for everybody in the gym. And it's it's you shoot ten ten straight minutes with. A bunch of rebounders and three or four balls at one basket with one guy. That's that's a lot of reps. So um, pleased with how we're how we're shooting the ball and not pleased with how we defended the three. Coach, Coach uh, reading up on Davenport, whenever he committed, it seemed like he was kind of a streaky shooter there to Cincinnati. Had 19 points in the first half, not much in the second half. Is that kind of what you're seeing a little bit? The streakiness in him? Yeah, I mean, I. You know, if he had 19 points in the second half, he probably wouldn't be playing here. <laughs> I mean, so, I mean, you know, he's he is a streak shooter. He's a uh, guy that can put points on the board in a hurry. Um, you know, defensively, we, we need him to improve. We need Joseph to improve. But those guys, both of them are, are really, really good shooters. And really with, uh, you know, with Davenport, when his feet are set, he's, he's not a good shooter. He's a great shooter. 
I think sometimes off the bounce and off the move, you know, the turnovers. Um, you know, he'll work on playing in a crowd tomorrow or whenever we get back together and, and, and work on not getting the ball stripped. But he's, you know, 19 points and a half can, can change a game for you when you really think about it. I mean, if a guy does that in a regular season game or an SEC game, then you're probably in a pretty good spot if you have a player that, can, that has the ability to get close to 20 and a half. I want to know who was guarding him, though. I wanted to ask about some of your front court guys. What did you see from from Graham and Makai tonight and then a, a double-double from Chandler Lawson? Yeah, so, you know, this Bucks offense that we're running that, that involves a lot of post play at the elbows and then uh, some Princeton cutting and, and some split actions, whether it's a guard-to-guard -guard split or a guard-to-wing split, Kai's really, really good at that. Um, and when we went back and reviewed the film from last year, he was involved in a lot of our big uh, post-elbow actions that led to layups and dunks. He's really good passer. He's a willing passer. He likes to play there. He does a good job sealing off defenders on the elbow uh, to, to receive a catch. Um, you know, and then Jalen Graham, I mean, he, you know, he's, he's, he's practiced a lot better than he did last year. I think he's, uh, you know, bought in to the, to the total scheme on both sides of the boys. You know, I'd like to see him rebound a little bit more, uh, in traffic. Um, but offensively he's, you know, he's a, he's a really hard guy to cover and he commands a double team and, 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 you know, he's, he's going to have to, uh, learn when people dig down or trap how to get that thing out and then get it back off of a repost will be really important for him Over here, uh, some of the players were in here saying that they were tired and just how, how are some of the new guys adjusting to your style your pace and things like that I, I think they're still adjusting um, you know I mean that's why we run the mile is to try to get him in shape but we I mean we have some guys you know probably some of the newer guys that um, are probably really tired and you know I think that we can play even harder than we did tonight you know I, I thought that in transition defense we gave up too many layups um, you know we didn't protect the rim enough um, we didn't go vertical enough around the rim you know, we didn't pick the ball up quick enough uh, full court with our backcourt players and our and our post players when they were guarding the inbound passer need to do a better job of 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 stunt bluffing and and uh and 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 letting the point guard or whoever's trying to initiate offense play in a crowd a little bit more and all that's you know a lot of effort things we didn't go to the offensive rebounds off our free throws uh nearly with the intensity that that we want or have come to expect here to try to get extra possessions but you know hopefully again over the next you know, three weeks we can we can improve these areas that we will identify next time we get together. Coach, we got to see Devo and uh, Mark kind of go one on one against each other a little bit tonight. What's it like watching them tonight going against each other in practice, and how do, will they complement each other when you guys finally do face an opposition? Yeah, I mean they're both fierce defenders. They they both have great length. Um, you know, both with their wingspan, they have great quickness, great anticipation, toughness, you know, all things that we can't teach any of those things. Um, they both have high will to win. So, you know, I think those guys together, I mean, obviously Devo's been a guy that, um, you know, for three years now we've told him to go guard the, the best player on the other team, and, and now – you know, we hope that, that Team Art can do the same and, and uh, you know, maybe those guys can alternate between guys and, and um, we can give, give the opponent a different look. You know, Team Art's a little bit different defender than Devo is, although they're both really excellent in their own ways. And, uh, you know, Team Art's got to – he's still got to jump to the ball when his man passes. That's – you know, an area that we need him to improve on. He still needs to close out with a high hand when when his man catches the ball. And those are just some little DNA things that are really important to us. And and it's he's still adjusting to do those things. But I think just hey, go guard that guy. I mean, he's probably as, as good as anybody. Yeah, coach. What did you think of the chemistry between Debo and Ellis tonight? I thought it was really good. Uh, you know, obviously. Both those both guys uh, have the ability to score, and and um, you know if you can 
both those guys can go get their shot virtually whenever they want. Um, and so, you you know, how is the chemistry, you know, is the ball going to move? Is the ball going to stick too much? Uh, is the ball going to be shared? All those things are certainly areas of concern if you have two guys that can, you know, off the bounce, go get something. But, the, you know, the great thing is there's a lot of end of shot clock stuff that happens in college basketball. Uh, and when you don't have people that can go get get their own or get a teammate a shot, which I thought L did a great job tonight and Devo of getting by their defender, drawing an extra one and making an extra pass. Uh, if those guys do that, you know, I think we can be, you know, pretty effective in late clock situations. Yeah, Coach, around this time last year, I remember you saying that in practice, when one when you have one group that builds a little bit of a lead, they just kind of go on a run, and it seemed like it was kind of back and forth like that. It seemed like today there was, on both sides, some pretty good runs. I just wonder what you see from that perspective. Yeah, I mean, I think that we can, you know, we're probably, probably a team that can score in spurts. We've got to do it, you know, the, the that team that wore the white uniforms tonight uh, got off to... A, you know, a pretty good lead, and then you look what happened after the first quarter, and and Red, you know, was way more consistent on both sides of the ball. Um, so if you're a little bit streaky offensively, you know, you want to be really, really consistent defensively from an effort standpoint, from a defensive rebounding standpoint, from a transition defense standpoint, and was, we got to get better at that. But look, we this red white game is played way earlier than we've done in the past so that we have more film. We thought that, you know, playing the red-white game and then having two exhibitions, we felt like it was too crammed together. And so last year we were able to have the four games in Europe in the summer that allowed us to have a, a lot of film and body of work. And that was part of the reason we moved this game up, um, you know, was to to have some video to, to teach before we compete again. Coach, you mentioned this Thursday. We got to see it for the first time. Just the maturity level of this team. So much experience that you brought in. Experience you're seeing on the court together. For these guys to gel so quickly, is it because of how much basketball these guys have played elsewhere? Uh, you know, I think that certainly helps. Um, I think it helps, uh, you know, because obviously we have a, a ton of new guys. But we also, I mean, you guys probably better statistically or have it in the top of your head but we have a lot of returners it seems like I mean we did, yes we got a ton of new guys but you know Devo started Kai started um, Joseph knows the offense inside and out uh, our two walk-ons phenomenal buddy coaching in practice I think so I think that that kind of consistency has helped the new guys as well Jalen Graham's a returner so and and he's a guy that played some significant mi so I think we got the new guys are being acclimated a lot because of their teammates who are trying to help them in practice. Um, but yeah, it's, we have a, we have a maturity and, and uh, surprisingly we've we've gelled pretty good offensively and need to gel better defensively. And a lot most of the time it's the opposite. At least in my tenure, it's been really good defensively and not so cosmetically pleasing offensively until we get to March. And even then, it's probably not real cosmetically pleasing. Miss, you said recently you really want your team to get out and run this year. A couple of questions on that. How did you feel like the transition offense was? And I know you were, said the defense wasn't as what you wanted it to be. And then also, I thought you got some three, some open threes on secondary break, just a couple of quick passes around the perimeter before the defense got set or could close. Could you talk about both of those aspects of your running game? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's really interesting because, like, when, when every new team – you know, a coaching staff can have, have a vision of what they want. Um, we noticed it about two weeks ago that we we have some guys that have an innate ability to contest a shot and then fly and release early. Not something that we've done here in the past because we focus so much on defensive rebounding. But we do have some guys that just innately um, contest and fly, which is a which is a you know it happens in the NBA all the time. Um, if we can get the other four guys to defensive rebound at a high level, we'd like to continue uh, to contest and fly just because we have guys that, you know, they probably probably got two or three guys that have been doing it their whole life, and it just kind of happens. It's not anything that we taught. 
And when you have a player that through instincts can be effective, you want to let them go and, and maybe, you know, as coaches, we got to adjust. Now, they, you know, like I said, we can't, we can't do that if the other four don't defensive rebound. Um, but, yeah, I think our secondary break, Kevin, is uh, I think this Bucks. you know, we're running it after misses, and then we're going to our half-court package on makes, and I think that they understand there's five spots on the floor that have to be occupied, and uh, they're doing a good job of owning the corners, running to the corners as quick as they can, getting to the 245 degree, and then having a trail guy, regardless of what, position you are I think tonight you probably saw a lot of fours and fives even handle the ball a little bit more although Davenport probably is not going to be bringing it up anymore um but you know we if Jalen Graham gets a defensive rebound you know we want our guys to have the freedom to grab and go yeah Eric I know it's a red white game he shot Red shot 68.5 percent, and the white shot 55. I assume you guys hadn't shot over here, and right? I mean, yeah, we might be a really good road shooting team. Yeah. Well, I was, I was wondering, just what, is what that you, where you're going? Yeah. What, what do you think of shooting percentages, and you know the fact that you y'all shot like that in a gym you're not used to being in? Well, the great thing is we've never practiced in Bud Walton, so maybe we'll shoot the crap out of it when we go there too. <laughs> um, I mean, I think it's a good sign. You know, like we didn't shoot around here today either. You know, when we practiced today, we practiced in our practice court. So the first time they ever, you know, were in here shooting um, was tonight. Great for our offense. I don't know who our defensive coordinator is, but he's got a lot of work to do tomorrow. Eric Joseph was in here earlier saying that he's he feels like he's matured most. I guess in areas of growth, maturity is a thing that – um, has grown since the end of last year. What have you seen from him in, in terms of that? And then, are there were there any physical changes? Like, did he did he get taller or just put on some some mass in the summer? Yeah, I think he's definitely stronger. Um, I, I think he's gained some weight, but it's really really good weight. I think he's actually leaner. Um, it's not often you can have a player gain some, you know, get stronger, gain a little bit of weight, and kind of lean out as well. And he's done that. Um, you know, when he got here, he was wearing a knee brace. It was pretty heavy. Um, I think it affected his mobility for sure. Um, and then when you take that thing off, you know, you got to get through some stuff too. And then he's a freshman, you know, and and um, and, he, and he's been patient. And he's and I think we're seeing a better player today than last year. Um, and look, when Joseph got opportunity last year I mean he helped us win you know the Missouri game I mean he he flat out as a freshman went into the game and helped us and um, you know we had enough confidence to have him in the game at the end of the Baylor game where he took the last shot that could have put it in overtime or whatever so he is a not a good shooter he's a phenomenal shooter and and uh, he's done a good job rebounding defensively because that's been an area that we felt you know, we needed him to, to go to the glass defensively a little bit. Um, he's got to improve uh, defensively, and it starts with getting lower, um, having, having a little bit lower disposition defensively. Uh, we're a no-middle team, and it should help him. Um, you know, I think that if, if, a, if, a, if a quicker player's got the ball and you know where you have to shade it, it should help him. Um, you know, he, he gave up middle a little bit too much tonight. And, and the good thing is we'll be able to go back and talk to him and, and tell him, hey, just you got to shade this guy where the help is. Coach, Mike's always rushing me out. You're tired? I'm tired. I drove back from Beyonce all night the other night. <laughs> Try getting back at 4.30 in the morning. Coach, when we talked to you last week, I think you said Brazil's timeline is two and a half weeks. Is he still on track for that? And I think, if my math is right, that put him back a few days before the first exhibition game. Is that a goal to, to get him to play in that? or Not necessarily, Hutch. I mean, I, I look, we are um, – with TB, like we're being – like like <laughs> I want TB in March. You know, I mean, we, we want him to, to get his rhythm and all that. He's done a – he's done an awesome job, like – um, he's been cleared, you know, he's, he's been with his rehab, uh, guy, they've done all the testing, um, everything's great. Um, 
probably could have played tonight, three minutes a half. But why? You know, we, we want him to go a little bit more three-on-three. Three. He's been going three-on-three three live uh, after we're done with practice. Um, and so he'll go three-on-three three live, you know, one more time this week at some point. And then uh, – but he's been jumping into all of our drills. And, and uh, look, offensively, when a player's coming off an injury like that, that's, that's not really an issue. The issue is I'm guarding you or you or you, and I got to react – and so that's, you know, that's why we're, we want to take our time. And um, no real timeline other than we certainly, you know, with the way it's going now, he's, he's playing opening night. You know, I mean, that's, that's not as long as everything continues to progress as is. Bet Online is your number one source for all your betting needs. Get the latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for baseball, boxing, golf, and more. Bet Online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wagers, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use our promo code BELIEVE. That's B L E A V. For your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts.